Good evening, this is Brass Tax. I'm Zakhar Jacob. There is a full-fledged face-off between two Deputy Chief Ministers in Southern India. Between Pawan Kalyan, Deputy Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, and Uday Nidhi Stalin, Deputy Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. The bone of contention is Sanatan Dhar. Pawan Kalyan has advised Stalin Jr., who is really junior to him by age and experience, not to malign or abuse Sanatan Dharm as he's done in the past. Remember, Stalin Jr. had got into a bit of a hot pickle some months ago when he compared Sanatan Dharm to dengue and cholera and how it needs to be eradicated. Pawan Kalyan has also issued a, an ominous warning saying that Hindus will not tolerate any kind of slander or abuse of Sanatan Dharm. Stalin Jr., who's just now been elevated just in the last few days to Deputy Chief Minister and most likely to succeed his father, Chief Minister M.K. Stalin, as and when he hangs up his boots, he has now responded by saying, and again, pretty coded language being used here, wait and we shall see. Separately, the Supreme Court today, hearing the Tirupati Laddu matter in what seems like a blow to the Andhra Pradesh government, has constituted a special central team with oversight by the CBI director, including two CBI officers, two officers from the Andhra Pradesh police, as well as one member from the FSSAI, to take a look at whether the Tirupati Laddus were actually made with adulterated ghee. The court did not take a particularly kind view of the Chief Minister, Chandra Babu Naidu, jumping the gun and coming to a conclusion even before the state government appointed SIT had come to a conclusion. But first, Let's bring you the story of how it is turning out to be, as I said, the war of the two deputy chief ministers in Andhra Pradesh and in Tamil Nadu and how they are racing to claim or shape this whole debate around Sanatan Dharma. Anyone tries to tries to wipe out Sanatana Dharma, let me tell you, from the feet of Lord Balaji, you will be by, wiped out. Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. And the honorable opposition leader, Sri Rahul Gandhi says. Ayodhya ceremony, where he compares to it as a Nazi Gahan Sabha. None of the Sanatri Hindus should not get hurt. We have to be happy about it. And you want the words of all the Sanatri Hindus to get into the power, to be a political leader, to be in the opposition. All right, so is this going to reshape the entire debate around Sanatan Dharm in southern India now that the two deputy chief ministers have crossed swords in Andhra Pradesh and in Tamil Nadu, respectively? Deepak Reddy is national spokesperson of the Telugu Desham Party. Uh, TK Selangovan, senior leader of the DMK, is now joining us. Suman C. Raman, uh, author and analyst, uh, joining us from Chennai. And Tushar Gupta, senior journalist, also joining us. Let me start with uh, Mr. TK Selangovan. So, you know, your leaders, and particularly the Deputy Chief Minister, the newly appointed Deputy Chief Minister, has been going on about Sanatan Dharm. He had said a few months ago that Sanatan Dharm is like uh, cholera and dengue. It needs to be eradicated. The matter went up to the court, and the court had particularly not so charitable things to say to him. Uh, the accusation against the DMK, including the latest one from Pawan Kalyan, is that you are despising followers majority followers of the majority religion in this country and you expect their votes to come to power. How do you respond, Mr. Langovan? See, DMK is uh, in its 75th year. What we had said during 1949 when the party was started, we are continuing with it. I don't know what is the meaning of Sanatana Dharma. Is it an equality of by birth of the people of uh, this country? And they accuse us of being anti-Hindu. The one thing I can say is that the only movement which was formed in, the, in Tamil Nadu, in the south of uh, South India, for the sake of the, for the welfare of the Hindus, that is backward classes and Dalits. They were not given education. They were not given employment. 
they were not even allowed to enter into any temple the movement the dravidian movement was started way back in 2000 1916 to give education to the hindus hindu backward classes and hindu scheduled castes they it was formed to give employment to the hindu backward classes and hindu scheduled castes we are continuing with that we are not against hindu people we are against certain hindu principles which had earlier denied them education and employment no mr lango there, there are two no no one second there, there are two slave. separate issues if i may please there are two separate issues sanatan means eternal it is eternal it is ageless it is timeless and dharma of course is, is you know no no a certain set of beliefs no one second I let, let me just finish so sanatan dharma as you have elucidated has nothing to do with the caste system that is varnashrama dharma which is a certain set of you know certain people are employed in certain professions and so on that has nothing to do with sanatan dharma or the phrase sanatan dharma or the belief system that is sanatan dharma which means eternal ageless timeless truths now my point is the followers of sanatan dharma by the utterances of your leaders are getting offended because as pawan kalyan said and as your leader said you're comparing it to you know dengue and cholera and it needs to be eradicated and so on surely some people find that offensive a lot of people find that offensive no i, I can understand that that is the feeling of a certain section of the people who are against the dravidian movement and we are for the people particularly for the hindu people who are dalits and scheduled caste and backward classes so what is sanatan dharma what is eternal that is what my question is it is the word is found in manu dharma what is eternal as per manu dharma you tell me lord it may be a separate issue it is not it may not be manu dharma but the term sanatan dharma takes place in manu dharma what is manu dharma it is the difference uh, of the people by birth classification of people you know based on their birth which is what we are opposing which is what we say that is it is wrong all human beings are equal what our thiruvalluvar <laughs> said was all men are born equal okay that is what we are questioning nobody had external uh, ex- uh, explained as to what is eternal dharma what is eternal dharma so someone see raman someone see raman will will yeah. explain zaka uh, so zaka see raman yeah the, the hilarious part is Mr Udayvidhi Stalin has just established that he is superior by birth over the rest of those in his party so they are practicing sanatan dharma which they want to eradicate so i don't think you should take them very seriously he is he is superior by birth over all those who have worked for 40 50 years for the party purely by the basis of birth he has become deputy chief minister in 4 years after entering politics so what are we talking about leave the hypocrisy aside first of all both sides need a diversion Mr Udayanidhi Stalin needs a diversion to deflect from the fact that the charge of nepotism and the charge of dynastic succession is coming into him. Pawan Kalyan needs a diversion because he they they goofed big time with the charge on the laddu issue which they don't seem to have enough evidence to back up. So both Pawan Kalyan needs a diversion, Udayanidhi Stalin needs a diversion and today here we are on national television discussing a complete non issue. No, one, one, second, one second one second one second now dr yeah. raman you know i i agree with a lot of things that you say but on this let me let me just let's just you know uh, analyze this uh, thread bear right you are saying that udayanidhi stalin wants to run away from this whole dynastic politics issue he can't you know unbirth his birth he is born to whoever he is born to he's he's the son of mr stalin and the son of ms durga yeah. he can't undo that and as you said by virtue of that he is now deputy chief minister Uh, I don't think that's politically costly in a state where, you know, Jayalalitha back in the 90s, you know, had this elaborate wedding for her foster son, and still managed to come back to power five years after that. No, no, no one second, one second, one second. Let me finish. Let me finish, please. Let me finish. Let me finish, please. Yeah. You are talking about a state where Mr. Mupanar's son forms his own party. Mr. Vijayakant's son is the is the heir of his own party. Uh, Jayalalitha, unfortunately. you know that 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 debate is still open in the air dmk because she didn't and ha- she didn't have any progeny had she had any progeny i don't think the air dmk would have been split three ways as it is today so to say that dynastic politics and udayanidhi needs a diversion from dynastic politics i don't think so i don't think that that certainly the history of tamil nadu doesn't bear that bear itself no, no. out in fact 
the charge which has been made against the DMK is exactly this. In fact, even now, Mr. Ilangovan only said that some are superior by birth. We don't accept that. Mm. Now, please tell me on what basis a gentleman who is exactly less than five years old in politics in a party which is celebrating its 75th year, in which many of the senior leaders have put in 50 years for the party, has been elevated as deputy chief minister. No, no, that is, is not the ma of material of the debate tonight. The material of the debate tonight is why are certain leaders, in, and you would imagine after his elevation now, he's virtually the number two in the party. Why yes. are they hell-bent on degrading, denigrating a certain section of people who have a certain set of faith ideals and beliefs and so on. They whereas, have whereas they wouldn't say that. the same. They wouldn't say the same of followers of Islam or Christianity or Buddhism no, no, no. They or are Jainism. The World Bank. See, let us be very clear, Zaka. The Dravidian movement has been saying this for ever since, uh, you know, the, the movement started. Like Mr. Langovan said, it is not the first time they are talking about destroying Sanatan Dharma. Okay. They have been saying the same thing for 60 years, 70 years. In fact, uh, there was a point of time when the precursors to the Dravidian party, which is, uh, you know, the, the, the DK and others, used to carry out, uh, uh, you know, used to beat idols of uh, gods with chapels. So, okay. this is the kind of movement. It is actually so, a kind of a hate uh, So, so uh, you are saying, you are saying yeah. that that, has, that is their political belief system and it has not cost them politically, it has worked and they for them. There say and they will not minorities. change that. Because they get 99% okay. of the minority okay, vote. Let me, so they will not let me dare ask say Deepak anything Reddy. about minority. So that is the response. That Mr. Pawan Kalyan can say whatever he wants to say. Uh, Udhanidhi Stalin says, let's wait and see. Almost like an ominous sort of coded message that whatever Mr. Kalyan has to say will not work in Tamil Nadu. And I just want to read out. Vote share, despite all this controversy, by the way. Your ally, which is, which is a relevant political party, the BJP in Tamil Nadu, Seat share 2024 Lok Sabha, zero. Seat share 2019 Lok Sabha, zero. Vote share 2019 Lok Sabha, 3.62. Vote share 2024 Lok Sabha, 11.24. So, Mr. Reddy, after all this noise and, you know, national debates around it, fact is that politically, you or your allies are not able to draw benefit out of it. Zaka, that's true. If you look at the history of uh, Tamil Nadu, this is the strategy what this party has been adopting for a long time. So, uh, you know, uh, getting people lost on the basis of this uh, uh, caste. And they are one of the most corrupt people you can find in this country. So to divert that, they have been successfully playing this politics all along. Unfortunately, the people haven't realized. And now in this day of information age, I think uh, they are coming to realize this uh, shortly. But we, Andhra, Telugu people, have realized their psychopathic uh, mindset and said we want a separate state. We don't want to be part of the Madras presidency and we formed a separate state. We understood their uh, mindset very early, early on after independence and we broke away. So let's come to a couple of things what uh, Pavan Kalyan said. What he was telling is law is very harsh and merciless when it comes to Sanatana Dharma. But people of other religions, law is very humane and kind. If somebody says uh, Sanatana Dharma is virus, we will end it and talk in a derogative manner, the courts don't seem to bother. But when it comes to uh, any comments made on Islam or any other religion, the courts get very active and they want to punish those uh, people also. Why is this discriminatory practice in this country? For how long will Hindus be uh, st uh, you know, uh, st stamped upon? is what his concern was. And he eloquently told a tiny little story which belongs to uh, from our part of the country. A sage once cursed uh, 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 a cobra saying that don't bite people. And a few months later when he was passing by the same road, he asked the cobra, what, what, uh, how's it going? The cobra said, every passerby throws a stone at me, including a tiny little child, because I don't bite. So the sage said, I asked you not to bite, but I didn't ask you to hiss and show your ferocity. So this is a story, what he told the Hindus, that, you know, Hindus have to stand up for their rights and we have to probably learn something from the Muslims as far as respecting their religion is concerned. Okay. So this kind, of a, this kind of a language, what is being used by them is, is you know, it is, uh, you know, not just insulting, but it is unbelievable that they can even behave like that in this day of age. But I want to appeal to the people of Tamil Nadu 
that these guys are doing these uh, uh, these dramas in politics only diverting and you know and you know they are the most corrupt people you can ever find so please okay. understand M- this Mr. 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 Reddy, may, may i may i now turn the attention to the other issue which is this whole tirupati laddu controversy and today the supreme court has constituted a cbi director oversight committee which will have two members from the cbi two members from the andhra pradesh police one member from the fssai uh is this not a blow to the andhra pradesh state government which as the court said in its last order was preemptive in jumping jumping to a conclusion even before the sit could investigate and come to a conclusion about the use of adulterated ghee i mean basically the court has taken away powers from the sit constituted by the state government and said we don't believe in the impartiality of that investigative body and now we want an investigative committee or a team which has central oversight Zaka, let me tell you one thing the team was uh, working hard and in a short period we would have got the report out but in the meantime the court has taken this decision and our chief minister chandra babu naidu ji has tweeted and welcome this decision if the court feels you need a bigger diversity or, or people representing the food safety and uh, people from cbi we welcome it because we want to get to the uh, bottom of this issue so uh, no, we don't does it also not it show something. the court's lack of faith in the state government appointed sit that is not true because uh, of uh, of the falsification of facts by the ycp the court thought it was sensitive and it is probably better to have a bigger body and we welcome that even if the court didn't take the decision our report would have come out in a week okay. now probably uh, it, it it will look fair and we most welcome it and our chief minister has clearly uh, expressed that in so, his, tushar, in his tushar gupta so what then is that is that play here as sumant raman says is it a diversionary tactic because both parties could use one whether it's the tdp and pawan kalyan because no matter how mr reddy tries to spin it the fact is that the supreme court has constituted a central government or cbi monitored probe you could argue that it's because it doesn't have faith in the uh, state government appointed society so they would want a diversion and of course udayanidhi stalin as mr uh, mr dr raman says but i don't agree with him uh, udayanidhi stalin wants a diversion to take away from all of these allegations of dynastic politics and the fact that he has been chosen as deputy chief minister only because of uh, whose son he is well let's address it point by point sir number 1 about udayanidhi stalin Let's be very honest. He has been elevated to the position of the deputy chief minister because what his family is, who is his father. It's that simple. I don't know why people like to run away from that reality. Starting with Udayanidhi Stalin himself, he is the son of a chief minister. He has been elevated to a certain position because of his entire family setup. This is nepotism. It happens in lot many states. I'm not trying to single out Udayanidhi Stalin here, but it is nepotism. It is political nepotism. It is what we see in Delhi. It is what we've seen in Punjab in the past. It is what we've seen in Himachal in the past. Tamil Nadu is no surprise. Number one. Number two about the investigation being given to the CBI. I think Zaka, we must understand keeping the sensitivity in uh, factoring in the sensitivity of the issue. It's rather a blessing in disguise that it has gone to the CBI because had it been a state monitored commission, it would have been another battleground for the local parties to play politics on. It would have worked out like that. so at the end of the day given the sensitivity of the situation to millions and millions of hindus across the country and across the world it's important for the results to come out for the verdict to come out number 2 number 3 about the statement made by pavan kalyan now i was listening to the dnk spokesperson he said all people are equal can udayanidhi stalin the comments he made last year say the same thing about any other religion i'm not saying he should i'm saying would he he wouldn't and that's the right thing to do but the problem is zaka any time in this country when someone makes a comment on any other religion other than hinduism everyone gets taken for a ride i remember that one instance where a party spokesperson made some very objectionable remarks on national television and the apex court said the anchors on television are problem people who are on, appearing on these debates are a problem that's what the supreme court observation so somewhere someone makes a comment on some religion which is not hinduism people like you and me get dragged by the apex court now you tell me is that fair there is a movie made on a certain religion people defended in the name of freedom of speech and secularism but at the same spokesperson or another spokesperson makes a comment on a different religion it's an apex court problem if there is a comedy group which makes a joke on a certain religion they are forced to apologize before the priest or whoever the representatives of the religion are but if the joke is made on hinduism it's the problem of freedom of speech people need to accept it people need to be 
free to such ideas. So Zaka, it's not something for the politicians alone to introspect on. Okay. It is something for the Hindu society also to introspect on. And I cannot deny that the Hindus in Tamil Nadu are voting for the DMK. They have voted for the DMK in the elections of 2024 after the statement made by Udhanidhi Stalin. And as far as I remember, the DMK was defending that comment. Even today, they are defending that comment. No, no, of course they have to defend. It's said by the deputy chief minister of the state. It's said by the son of the chief minister. Uh, but th that's th that's besides the point. So let, let Mr. Elangovan respond on this. Uh, again, Suman Sri Raman also made this veiled allegation against your party that you are you are basically having different set of standards, Mr. Elangovan. When it comes to Hindus and Sanatan Dharmis, you feel okay and kosher that your leader, your deputy chief minister can seemingly abuse them saying it's cholera and dengue and it needs to be uh, eradicated but would he dare say the same thing about practitioners of Islam or Christianity or Buddhism or any other faith for that matter? See we are Hindus, we are by birth Hindus. We are fighting for the uh, insult we were facing within this religion. What Periyar said when Ambedkar wanted all Dalit people to join Buddhism Periyar said, no, we have to fight from within. This is our religion. We cannot be treated as untouchables. We have to fight from within. That is what we are doing. Why should we bother about other religion? We are Hindu, born Hindus. But we were insulted because of our birth or our community or our class. That is what we are fighting against. Why should we talk about Christianity or uh, Islam? There are six religions. In India, India we have we have Buddhism, we have Jainism, we have Sikhism, we have Saivism, we have Vaishnavism. There are many religions in India, but this religion, this Hindu religion as it is called today, they people born in this religion are facing these difficulties. So we are fighting. No, but Mr. There Mr. are no Mr. class Mr. difference in no, other no. religions. There, there, Maybe are two, that, that, there are two parts to it. Periyar fought against this and his way of fighting against this was to destroy statues and to turn to atheism. Many of your leaders have been atheists. Kalinga Karnaradi has been atheist. Uh, Aringa Ranna yes. has been atheist. Yes. To say that you are fighting from within, yes. that's a bit... Uh, uh, the chief minister himself is atheist. To say that you are born Hindus and fighting from within, that's not quite accurate, is it? So then what is the difference no, between you and the ADMK said. then? We don't want to join Buddhism. We don't want to join Buddhism. Atheism was because, I will tell you one thing, why atheism was followed by Piriya. In, in uh, Bhagavad Gita, there is a sentence that Chatur Vanyam Maya Shristam, the God has said. That is why he was against God. How can God divide its own people, uh, his own people into Complete classes? the sentence. Okay, complete the phrase. Dr. Raman. Chatur Vanyam Maya Shristam Guna Karma Vibhagaha. That is the rest of the <laughs> rest of the cup, uh, the phrase. Guna karma, guna. It depends on your. It does not depend on your birth. I the in Gita, Lord Krishna says, I have created the four varnas based on the the uh, the karma or the work which is done by the people and their innate good qualities, guna or karma. So they have cut out the second half <laughs> by taking only the first half. Okay. If but but Dr. Raman, before I go to Tushar, I, I need to wind down also the debate. But but Dr. Raman, no, 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 once again, uh, you, you have to also answer the point that the DMK is making, whether it is untouchability, whether it is not allowing people of certain castes into temples, so on and so forth, whether it is appointing okay. priests of certain castes. I mean, th these, are, these are issues that they take Zaka. up, whether no, you like it or my not. God, Zaka, you are not aware. There are every I, daily, daily there sentence. are instances where can people are not being allowed into sentence. temples in Tamil Nadu. They say, quote unquote, dominant caste. DMK will not talk about them because they are vote back. So let's be very clear. Day before yesterday, a lady, a Dalit lady died. Her body could not be taken for, for burial because it was passing through the main road where, quote unquote, Dominant community. You won't name okay. the community. Okay. Dominant community did not allow us to say look over whether he saw Tushar, it or not. Tushar, Tushar and then um, and then no, Mr. No, Reddy no. to close. This yeah. is happening. You know, Zaka, the DMK spokesperson just this validated the point I made a couple of minutes back. He says we are fighting the differences, the differentiation that exists within the Hindu setup. Is he telling that there is no such differentiation, no such ethnic conflicts between Sikhs within the group of Sikhs? Does he not know that there are Dalit Sikhs? Does he not know that there are conflicting groups within Islam? 
does he not know the foundations of the conflicts in middle east which have been going on for centuries this is my problem zaka everyone finds a free license to bash up hinduism but they do not like to talk about the other religions okay. number 2 and the final point Quickly, Can quickly, the DNK yeah. spokesperson tell me, as a born Hindu, in which definition of Hinduism were they being asked to say that Sanatan Dharma must be eradicated like dengue and cholera? Not differentiation, not reservation, but Sanatan Dharma as a whole they wanted to eradicate. What kind of a born Hindu? Okay, Mr. That? Reddy, cl closing uh, comment. I, I really need to wrap up in 30 seconds. Yeah, I need to move yes, to the next. Yes, yeah, I mean, I mean, I am very clear. This is purely politically motivated, and these people, the way they are talking, are something what what. Probably might have happened there in 1940s or something, but we are living in 2024. This is a different India altogether. I was on the SC uh, committee in Andhra Pradesh. If you see the SC colonies are far more developed than other 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 uh, parts of the village. So they should stop dividing uh, the people on the name of caste for their political gains. And it is time the people also realize that they should throw such corrupt and deviant minds out of politics. Okay, Thank you. I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much to all our guests. Let's see how this uh, plays out. Like I said, politically, so far at least, we've not seen a downside for the DMK with the comments that Uzenity has made or whether uh, it is in the looks of our election, whether it's in the assembly election and of course there's going to be in 2026 the next set of assembly elections. I want to move on to the 